Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the KC-46 completes another required test. Fly a P-40 simulator at AirVenture. This sounds really cool. FAA updates runway condition reporting system. I'm Brie Cross, it's July 21st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The KC-46 Pegasus Aerial Tanker Program moved closer to production last week as it completed all-flight tests required for the Milestone C production decision by offloading 1,500 pounds of fuel to an A-10 Thunderbolt II. This is the airplane commonly known as the Warthog. The successful A-10 mission was the last of six in-flight refueling demonstrations required before the tanker program can request approval from the Under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition, Technology and Logistics to award production totaling 19 KC-46A aircraft. Along with demonstrating fueling capacity to the A-10, the other five required air refueling demonstrations were with the C-17 Globemaster and F-16 Fighting Falcon using the air refueling boom, the Navy's F-18 Hornet and AV-8B Harrier using the centerline and wing drogue systems, and the KC-46 as a receiver aircraft. The Milestone C decision to begin low-rate initial production is expected in August. Attendees at AirVenture next week will have the opportunity to remember Pearl Harbor firsthand. Redbird A2A Flight Simulations and Flying are sponsoring a 75th commemoration of the attack on Pearl Harbor at Booth 445 during AirVenture 2016. They are joining with the Pacific Aviation Museum at Pearl Harbor to allow AirVenture attendees to experience flying the custom MX-2 full motion simulator built by Redbird Flight Simulation, which mimics the World War II Curtis P-40 fighter. This is to commemorate the courageous action taken by 2nd Lieutenant George Welch, along with his wingman Lieutenant Ken Taylor when they flew their outgunned P-40s into action against the attackers in the Battle of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. This P-40 flight simulator was donated by Redbird Flight Simulations and Scott Gentile, president of A2A Simulations. This report is a good example of why we created our hashtag OSH 16 coolest program at AirVenture this year. Flying this P-40 simulator sounds really cool. Be sure to tweet us and tell us what you think. After the break, FAA attacks the problem of runway overruns in bad weather. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The FAA and other members of the aviation community have developed new standards to improve safety at U.S. airports during inclement weather. On October 1st of this year, U.S. airports, airlines, general aviation pilots, and air traffic controllers will begin using new takeoff and landing performance assessment standards to reduce the risk of runway overrun accidents. The FAA developed the standards based on the work of the Takeoff and Landing Performance Assessment Aviation Rulemaking Committee. As a result of the committee's work, the FAA has developed a new method for airports and air traffic controllers to communicate actual runway conditions to the pilots in terms that directly relate to the way a particular aircraft is expected to perform. The system improves the way the aviation community assesses runway conditions based on containment types and depth, which provides an aircraft operator with the effective information to anticipate airplane braking performance. Airport operators will begin using the runway condition assessment matrix to categorize runway conditions and pilots will use it to interpret report runway conditions. Check with FAA publications for all the details. It's Thursday, which means that it's time to reflect on the news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. And today we're really including everybody because we're talking about EAA AirVenture 2016. With AirVenture only five days away, we have already started working with the partners that make Airborne Unlimited and AirVenture the fantastic event that it is. Our Vanguard crew, which includes ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell, 
arrived earlier this week to open up our permanent office, which is located adjacent to the EAA Press Center just north of the airport control tower. By Saturday afternoon, we'll have 28 people on the ground ready to give you the best coverage ever at AirVenture. Jim has not only been getting the facility ready, he has also been producing our AirVenture Innovation Preview webcast programming, which will go online on the evening of Saturday, July 23rd. This programming will feature about 40 AirVenture exhibitors who are introducing new and exciting products that are appearing at AirVenture for the first time this year. The video snippets will be short and to the point and give everyone at AirVenture and around the world a quick look at what's new. Of course, during AirVenture, our Airborne Unlimited programming will continue, but we should probably change the name to Airborne Unhinged because of all the exciting subjects we'll be bringing to you during our broadcast from Oshkosh. The entire Airborne Unlimited crew, which includes Christopher Odom, myself, our news editor Tom Patton, and of course Jim Campbell, will be covering all that's going on, all that's new, and all that's cool. We are proud to say that Aero News Network has AirVenture covered like never before and like no one else. After these messages, federal excise tax relief for business aircraft operators moves forward. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A U.S. House bill has been introduced that would exempt aircraft owners from federal excess tax for maintenance and support of their aircraft by management services companies. The exemption is limited to non-commercial flights by the aircraft owner obtained through a qualifying lease. Synergy Aerospace Corporation, the majority shareholder of Colombia-based Avionica and owner of Avionica Brazil, has finalized a purchase agreement with Airbus for 62 A320neo family aircraft. This deal marks over 1,000 Airbus aircraft sold in Latin America. Top military and civilian aerobatic teams will perform at the Wings Over the Golden Isles and the Wings Over North Georgia air shows. The Royal Canadian Air Force Snowbirds will headline the inaugural Wings Over Golden Isles air show on October 8th and 9th. Astronomers have discovered and confirmed a treasure trove of new worlds using NASA's Kepler spacecraft on its K-2 mission. Among the findings, tallying 197 initial planet candidates, scientists have confirmed 104 planets outside our solar system. CFM International announced orders, commitments, and long-term service agreements for a total of 565 engines with a value of $8.2 billion at the 2016 Farnborough Air Show. CFM product lines include the LEAP and CFM 56 engines. Ten companies were named in the deal. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Two pilots recently completed a flight to establish the first airplane efficiency world record in the C-1C class as sanctioned by the Federation Aeronautique Internationale. Ross McCurdy, a high school teacher in Rhode Island, and Terry St. Loop, an executive at SMA Engines in Texas, took off from the Essex County Airport in New Jersey last week in a Cessna 182 equipped with a highly efficient compression ignition engine from SMA. The triangular course was 848 nautical miles and was completed in 9.1 hours using only 56 gallons of fuel. This resulted in an efficiency of 15.1 nautical miles per gallon, which is a world record in its class. This world record also demonstrates the potential of aviation biofuels and all renewable energy as the flight was completed using 50% biofuel. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.